tomorrow afternoon. I'd like to welcome everybody to December 22nd, regular meeting of the Marlboro Township Board of Education. Cindy, would you please call the roll? Good evening, everyone, and happy holidays. Mrs. Dean. Here. Mrs. Enney. Here. Mrs. Cow. Here. Good evening. Mrs. Lou Riddell. Here. Mr. Marshall. Here. Mrs. Matos. Here. Mrs. Wolf. Here. And Mr. Lelonsky. Here. Please be advised this meeting is being held in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, the Sunshine Law. The adequate notice of the date, time and agenda is sent to the Asbury Park Press and news transcript and also been posted in the file with the Marlboro Township Clerk. Copies have also been sent to each district school and other area newspapers in accordance with the law. I'm going to bring your attention to, but I'm not going to read in its entirety, statement of videotaping a public portion of the Board of Education meetings, a public station, session statement, as well as no smoking on school grounds. Everybody, please rise and join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'll work this place, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we have two different types. Uh, the artwork in the lobby in the front hallway is courtesy of, of Mrs. Barchi's art classes at Robertsville. And the artwork in the boardroom is courtesy of the champions at Defino. Excellent. Yeah. Announcements. Um, Sin, you want to start off with this one? Absolutely. Uh, I wanted to recognize Mr. Nick Russo, one of our school bus drivers, who notified BASE on December 2nd that uh, there was a problem with uh, his bus broke down. And Mr. Halmy, who is our courier, uh, happened to be in the area. And he informed BASE that he would stay behind the truck, behind the bus, so park his truck so went away. So when the kids could get off, they were protected to get onto the second bus. So I wanted to recognize them both for, you know, taking all the necessary precautions and what could have been a, you know, not a bad situation, but a difficult situation, and making it seamless for everybody, especially the students. Stuff, very nice. Good. Yes. Thank you. Um, I want to I want to congratulate again Middles Corral, uh, who were the grand champions, um, which is just awesome. So they won um, the top prize in the entire state by having the most votes. So I want to really give a huge shout out to Mrs. Chandler, Ms. Chandler, uh, and all the talented members of the corral who. Uh, who sang their little hearts out and, and did a great job. And they got a $1,000, and piano. they have a, a brand new piano. Yeah. Grand which, piano. Yeah, yeah, a grand That's piano, awesome. which is just incredible, very grand. So very nice. nice nice testimony to, <laughs> sorry, too easy. Uh, nice testimony to how hard uh, our children work and our staff and uh, the incredible music program that we have in Marlboro as well. Um, we also, well, actually, that's it for me. No, no, I'm no. sorry. We have the all short and intermediate band auditions uh, for both Memorial and, uh, and Middle. So the all short intermediate band is an ensemble formed by students from Ocean and Monmouth counties who audition. They perform a concert in February for parents and friends. Uh, and the students accepted into this group perform high school level music. It's truly an honor. Um, and we had a lot of children uh, from both middle and from Memorial uh, that made all kinds of, uh, of different parts. So we had Harry Alex, eighth grade for tenor sax, Larry Dalton, seventh grade euphonium, Hannah Lee, seventh grade flute, Thomas Lee, eighth grade flute, Gloria Liu, eighth grade flute, uh, Theodore Nugent, uh, eighth grade uh, alto sax, Amy Zhao, uh, seventh grade clarinet. That was all from middle. And for Memorial, we had uh, Eric Wang, sixth grade trumpet, uh, Alan Zhang, sixth grade clarinet, Ashley Wang, seventh grade flute, Alexander Zhu, uh, seventh grade alto sax. So uh, congratulations to all the students that, that, made the, uh, that made the band, which is a great honor. Right. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. I'd like to thank, once again, Tara Gosevich, DMD, who once again is the district's Emerald Level sponsor for 2015-2016 school year. We thank her for all her support. School bus driver. Yes, as we do every month, we run abstracts on both our transportation, our buildings and grounds drivers, and all of their, they have a status of privileges and good standing. Thank you, ma'am. If Thank I can, sure. I'd like to recognize our superintendent for uh, getting a, he had applied for a personalized learning fellowship, and it, he was selected from approximately 100 applicants to become one of 27 finalists 
to uh, participate this. He went on a conference in November, uh, and uh, there they were giving out, of those 27 finalists, he was interviewed for 10 fellowships, and he won one. And so it will start, they will come in January. So I want to congratulate Dr. Hip. Thank you. That's so nice. Yeah, that's, thank you. I, I don't like being... Will there be a prom? We, we, what was that? Will there be a prom also when you're older? <laughs> yes, yes, we're going to have a prom, uh, 100%. Oh, so it's cool. it's actually uh, it's it's very interesting the concept of personalized learning, uh, how we can not only give children say into how they learn, but also in how they're assessed. Uh, so it, it's going to end up being about a hundred thousand dollars worth of services they're going to come in. Uh, and, and give us essentially for free, not even essentially, it's, it's for free, which is great. So they're going to, uh, I have a, a kickoff conference call because it's, it's from uh, places across the nation. Um, and then they're going to come and work with us individually in April. Uh, they're actually going to fly uh, four sets of people to Marlboro. And we're going to have uh, sessions in here. So four different school districts um, from Alabama, uh, Wisconsin. Right. And, uh, and what they do is they help us with um, developing a vision. And they do a graphic uh, representation, so they'll do they'll draw pictures of our vision, um, which I've already coerced Mr. Bologna into hanging in his office, um, which is going to be great. So it's it's it was it's really going to be a, a great thing for the kids in Marlboro. Great. Good stuff. What thank Congratulations. Uh, yeah, I have one. Uh, so everybody received a letter. Uh, so we have to do a mid-year budget review where we sit down with the executive county superintendent uh, and we sit down with all members uh, of the county office. And as we sat there, um, Joan, who is the county VA, literally turned to, to Cindy and said, I want to congratulate you. Um, you run the tightest ship in Monmouth County, um, which was it was, it was it was awesome to hear. Um, Cindy was... Uh, had the highest ratings as far as budget goes of anybody in the entire county, and it was just—it was a great conversation to have because you hear, you know, you hear, you don't hear great, you know, people give compliments all the time. So we we gave one to each other tonight, which is, you know, <laughs> which is, yeah, thank, thank you. you. So you work very hard, Sandy, as is you know everybody You're in like office. Kumbaya, so. yeah. I know. <laughs> it, was. it was a great letter and it was a great, a very nice compliment. Thanks, Thanks, Congratulations. Thank you. We can sing too if you want. <laughs> no, thank you. I mean, I can tell you we're going to hear more about it later. But even you know when we met the whole you know the audit committee and they had nothing but uh, very positive accolades to say as well. So it's coming from multiple sources, yeah. which I think also uh, warrants mentioning. So yeah, and Absolutely. then the Cindy even mentioned in in her office she had moved the space around. You know, for the plug, not the a plug. new plug. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's under he doesn't have run off the space. Under, yeah. Yeah. That's for construction. Yeah, well, this will be number 14. I was so. going to say 14. I thought it was going to yeah. be right. Yeah, there. it'll be, we're applying for number 14. So, yeah. you know, Kevin and his office know. They, they, they're, we did good last year. We'll do good, good then. So, we'll Very be good. fine. All right. Good stuff today. Everybody received a copy of the superintendent's report, including harassment, intimidation, bullying, hip report. November 19, 2015, December 16, 2015, there are three incidents. Anybody have any questions or comments on the report? Okay, upcoming meeting dates will be Tuesday, January 5th, our reorganization meeting right here. <laughs> Tuesday, January 12th, workshop, and Tuesday, January 19th, our regular meeting. Current enrollment sits at 5,101 students, which is 90 less than the same time last year. That'll bring us to our approval of minutes resolution. Joanne, would you mind reading page four? <laughs> Uh, page four in the bottom. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, um, be a, uh, be, uh, me, promote the meeting uh, minutes resolution. Be it a result that meeting min minutes of the following uh, meeting be approved as a summit. November um, 12, 2015. I so move. I got two more. Next page. Next page on five. Right yeah. at the top there. Those oh, dates. okay. Yes, yes. November 24th, 2015, <coughs> regular executive meeting. December 1st, 2015, workshop executive meeting. I shall move. Thank you, Joanne. Seconded by Debbie. Any co any uh, comments? Questions on the meeting? Adam Plus? Oh. Uh, I want to note in front of you, Mrs. Matos requested a change to the minutes and the board attorney. So in front of you is 
the change in the minutes that were requested uh, from November 24th under the discussion. I just gave you the page. You don't need the whole set of minutes all over again, I didn't think. Um, and then the executive session minute also that we uh, added to. So you have those in front of you. You okay with that, Debbie? Yeah, no, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, okay so we'll be voting on the minutes, including this. So yes. we'll clear. Okay, anybody questions? Cindy, please call the roll. Mrs. Wolf? Yes. Mrs. Dean? Yes. Mrs. Annie? Yes. Mrs. Cow? Yes, uh, except on November 24th. You're abstaining? Yeah. No abstaining. I was absent. Was no, you abstaining? You were, you abstained. Oh, okay. Hmm. No, she wasn't she absent. absent on that day. She's not absent if she's commented in the, in the comments. Oh, no, she's not. You you were there. You were there. You're, you're I'm sorry, mentioned I'm the sorry uh, December 1st. I was going to say, I think it was December 1st. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. Lou Rudell? Yes. Mrs. Matos? Yes. And Mr. Lelonsky? Yes. Thank That'll you. bring us to the uh, Secretary of Business Administrator's report, including payroll certification and investment report. Anybody have any questions or comments on those items? Seeing none, I bring us to public session. We have uh, 60 minutes allowed to public session, five minutes uh, per person. Cindy has um, duplicates of the yellow and the yellow warning and the red when your time is up. And she'll raise them, and I'll raise them as well when I see her raise them. She's the top, Cindy will be the timekeeper. Uh, you can public session open to any item you wish to address the board with. Do we have a pad with any names? So we'll start with the pad, and if anybody else wants to speak after, they're welcome to. Uh, okay, I'm going to apologize because I screw up names quite frequently. Robert Magzini? <laughs> How bad was I? Oh, what was that? <laughs> that was real bad. M-A-G-I-N-Z-I. Oh, -I. <laughs> uh, uh, well, <laughs> to me that looked like an I. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I apologize. Hello, my name. <coughs> Hello, my name is Robert Magliuzzi. I'm a seventh grader in Marlboro Middle School and a Boy Scout from Troop 18 Freehold. <laughs> we don't bite. Feel free, Just Robert. Free. You are all good, my man. Speak your mind. Why are you here? What are you upset about? I'm here because of um the chief three thousand. Can you here? How about if we do this? You. Michael reset his okay. time. <laughs> okay, now. I'm here because of um, the Chi 3000 um, rating and like so all of us things. <sighs> Doing great. Okay. Don't be nervous. You're good. Um, my Lexile is about 1,430. And that's around the luck cell of a 12th grader. So when I actually do it, she doesn't. I'm getting questions normally meant for 12th graders instead of 7th graders. So I get like vocabulary questions and like the, the multiple choice answers for them. I don't really under know what any of the words mean. I can't understand. I'll tell you. Yeah. Yes. Sure. <laughs> I should your name for the. Uh, my name's Barbara Magliozzi. I'm his mother. <laughs> so he has a very high Lexile level, and he used to like a cheap 3000. He's a lover of reading. He's been reading since he was three years old. But now he goes online to do a cheap 3000, and he gets nervous. He's not happy. And it's all because of the way it's graded. Not that he doesn't like a cheap 3000, it's because it's being used as a grade. And we understand that as you do achieve 3,000, as long as you get a 75, you will keep moving up the ladder. So he's got a, a seeds <coughs> for a 12th grader. He's already nervous, and he keeps going up. He feels like he's a failure now instead of, wow, I used to get a great achieve score. So now he's going online getting nervous, and he's not the only one. So most parents just won't come and talk to you. So 
He really just wants not to get rid of Achieve 3000. He wants them to stop grading it because he's doing well in literacy, but in science and social studies, he's getting, I know, he's getting failing grades, in fact, but his overall Achieve score is a 75. So it keeps getting harder and harder. So he's getting more and more upset. We actually asked to move back his Lexile score. We were told they couldn't. And the other question problem then ends up being, it's not an objective grade. He should be being compared to a seventh grader. He's, not, he's now being compared to a 12th grader, and he's getting C's, D's, and F's. Sometimes A's in English, but it's only 5% of his score, but not for nothing. Nobody wants to see a failing grade in their things. We understand the teachers want to make sure that they're there's some rationale to grading, and, but one of the things we understood, I spoke to the people I achieved, is there's actually something called a subscript. So if a kid is actually doing something online and he rushes it, or he goes too slow, or he does uh, like A, B, C, D as his answers, it automatically tells them. So there's no reason that you actually need that score to not know that a kid's not doing his work. You already know because it actually will tell you in the, in the grading system. So. I, I just don't think it's a fair grade. If a, if a person, a third party, came out and looked at the grades, he would be looked at as a poor student, but he's doing extremely well. So that's, and he had to actually come up for a community service. He had to go to visit a community thing for his Boy Scout troop <laughs> and discuss something that's been bothering him. Good. That's cool. Is there anything you want to add? No? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. We really don't okay. bite. <laughs> I just screw up names, that's all. It only bothered him when he got to middle school, because that's where the grades started happening. He, he never disliked the system until then. And then he's been coming home very upset. I mean, since I've been asking since sixth grade to change something. So. OK. That's it. Thank very you. well spoken, Robert. Very well. <laughs> Good job, son. And, and we'll, we'll respond at the end of public session. We respond to all the uh, comments at the end of public session. Is there a way, can I take a picture of him? Please? Sure. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Put your hand on the microphone. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Good job. Did Good nice job. work. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you for coming out. <laughs> so poor little thing. No name. Anyone else would wish to address the board in any item? Okay. Seeing none, we're going to move on to the presentation. Oh, you got to respond. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Robert, here, move so you can see me. First off, I want to let you know that was awesome. In life, life is not about every assessment that you take. I don't believe that. Life is about what you take from that assessment and from life in general. You coming here and speaking like a gentleman about your feelings is awesome. I want to applaud you for that, and I want you to always remember that. I uh, There's part... Part of this discussion that we're going to entertain this year about assessment will include topics 100% like achieve. And my belief is that students do not do better when there is a threat of punitive consequences. I think that in a lot of ways, homework um, and, and learning outcomes should be a true measure of what a child should know and be able to do. So what we will do. Robert is 100% look at the system, and we, we always engage in, in very good philosophical assessment discussions anyway. Even today, uh, I had a discussion with Mr. Bowman and Mr. Ballone. Mr. Bowman heads ELA, um, and then Mr. Mr. Ballone heads all of curriculum. Uh, so I want you to know that your point is not lost on the fact that you are reading on a 12th grade level and other children would be assessed at a lesser level than you. Not lost on me, 100% resonating with me. Okay? So I want you to understand that I understand where you're coming from. And for the fact that you are reading at that Lexile, way to go, Bubs. That is awesome. Okay? okay? So I want to applaud you. I want to thank you. Uh, and, and we will discuss this topic and others all throughout this year. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, presentation of the 2014-2015 school year audit. Good evening. Um, is, that, is that good? I usually, ha I usually have a big mouth. Thing. Um, I'm Kevin Frenier. For those of you that don't know me, I'm a partner with Holman, Frenier, and Allison. 
Uh, we just recently completed your audit. The audit is a little later than we like to try to get it to you, um, but it, it was filed on the um, before the due date with the state. There was a little um, change this year that, that really affected our office. Government, I'm sorry. A little change. A little change. Yeah, it's a it's a large change actually. But um, governmental accounting standard board, which is uh, we call GASB, came out with a pronouncement that now requires us to record the unfunded portion of your pension uh, system. And uh, we got the information probably mid-November, and we do about 60 school boards, and it was really quite a big change. So that's why we're, I'm here so late. But again, we, we did file the uh, report on time. Um, we met with the Finance Committee last week and probably spent an hour and a half going through the details of this audit report. I'll be glad to cover anything that you want, but what I was planning on doing is kind of giving you a brief overview of the report, kind of telling you, explaining to you what's in there, the things that I think that um, you would find interesting. I don't know if interesting is the right word, but things you'd find um, that you probably should take a look at. And the first thing I want to tell you is there's, there's basically two reports. I bind them together for your convenience. There's the CAFR, which is a comprehensive annual financial report. And uh, those are your financial statements. Cindy puts them together. And what we, what we add to that is our auditor's opinion. The second report is a smaller report bound in the back. And that is the, um, the a they call it AMR, Auditor's Management Report. And that's our report to you. And I'm going to explain a little bit about what's in there and some things I think you should take a look at. Um, the first thing I want to take a look at is the auditor's report is on page 25. Again, these are your financial statements, and what we do is we come in and, and uh, we opine on the financial statements, and we look at basically three things. We look at internal controls, are there checks and balances in place to um, protect the financial transactions as they go through the, uh, the system. We look at compliance. There's an awful lot of state and federal uh, compliance requirements. And then we also look at GAAP, or generally accepted accounting <laughs> principles, to make sure that the financial statements are presented in the correct way. So um, you got what we call an unmodified opinion, which is the best opinion you can get. Basically says your internal controls are in place, you're in compliance with state laws and regulations, and the presentation of the report is, is as it should be. So that's really the, um, the, the uh, opinion that you strive for, and congratulations on that. Um, one area I think if you're going to spend some time reading the report, and again I apologize you didn't have a chance to look at it before the, uh, the meeting, and we'll make ourselves available to answer any questions you may have after you've had a chance to look at it. Uh, on page 29, <coughs> this is the, the uh, management discussion and analysis, and, and, and in your district this is particularly well done. Um, what this is, is it's kind of a, a, um, a verbal overview of the financial statements. There's a tremendous amount of financial statements in here, and you can, you can very easily get lost in some of the numbers. But if you read the management discussion and analysis, it, it, it's kind of an overview of, of everything that happened, what uh, the changes were in the, uh, in the um, district, the revenue, and the revenue and expense changes are explained. There's also the talks about your debt and your pension requirements, and, and really quite well done. So if you want to kind of get a good overview in a short period of time, that's where I think you should spend some time. Uh, also, page 65 begins your notes to the financial statement. And notes to the financial statement explain a lot about your accounting basis. Um, the way we handle funds, we have we, we, we were in governmental accounting, so it's a little different than what you're going to look at if you're looking at a, a commercial account. Financial statements are maintained a little differently. There's also a lot of good information in there about your pensions and your debt, uh, your cash and how that's insured by FDIC and the uh, Governmental Unit Deposit Protection Act. It talks about the cash that you have and how it's taken care of. And any non-financial issues that might come up, if there was a lawsuit out there that we knew was out there that may affect you financially in the years to come, it would be explained in there. So anything that wouldn't appear actually in the financial statements that might have financial impact would be in there as well. Um, I want to take you to page uh, 94, and, I, and I, I'm just trying to make people aware, and, and everybody's heard a lot about how bad the pension system is underfunded in New Jersey, and it really is. And when I started looking at these numbers, I really was kind of taken back. Um, on page 94, note 21, we're making an adjustment to your GAAP financial statements. Uh, GAAP financial statements are much more of a commercial type financial statement. Um, not as big a concern to you because you're really much more budgetary based. Um, we made an adjustment to your financial statements for $21.8 million. 
$21.8 million represents the unfunded portion of the PERS pension. It does not include the TPAF, does not include the teachers. It's simply the non-teaching personnel within the district. There's $21.8 million unfunded liability in those pensions. Uh, quite, a, quite a number. Um, to get an idea, I'm going to just take you to 123 for a minute. To get an idea of the, the TPAF unfunded pension liability, the good news about the TPAF or the teachers unfunded pension liability is that's the responsibility of the state. That's not the responsibility of the district. Um, and then, although you have a large unfunded deficit, they're not going to come in, obviously, and, and ask you to write a check right away. I'm not sure how they're going to handle this deficit going forward. But on page 123, the unfunded portion, the unfunded portion of the TPAF pension for this district only is $198 million. Um, so you can kind of get an idea of, of the scope of the underfunding of the pension system. Um, again, that 198,000 is the responsibility of the state and not the district. But it, you, the numbers you mean are million. Really, million. I'm sorry. You mean million, not thousand. Right? 198 million. Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry. Did I say thousand? <laughs> we wished. Yeah, I wish. Um, so that we it, could take care of. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's really a big number. It really is a big number, and it's it's something that really needs to be addressed at the state level. But just kind of wanted to make you aware of that. Um, the the financial statement that I would spend some time with, if, if um, you wanted to get an idea of where you are, starts on page 98. <clears throat> and this is the budgetary comparison. And this really is kind of the meat and potatoes of your financial statements. The first column is the original budget, um, the budget that was initially adopted by the district. Uh, the budget transfers, um, plus or minus, you approve transfers usually probably almost every meeting. I, I kind of like to take a look at the budget transfers to kind of see, you know, what, what was different between the plan that we originally put together and what we, we uh, eventually needed to spend. Uh, it gives you a comparison of the budget, the budget, the budget transfers, uh, and page 99 is the actual, and in, in this case, the first half of the page is revenues, and then the expenditures start. So um, I kind of like to take a look at that, and you can see what we spent. Everything in here from textbooks to teacher salaries to transportation is all listed in, in this account. And um, it kind of gives you an idea, what did we budget, what did we spend, what were the changes that happened throughout the year. And that, that schedule goes all the way through page 111. And on page 111 is your, uh, your fund balance. <coughs> I'm in the actual column, the fourth column over. And I, I guess I want to talk a little bit about first about the, uh, the third column, final budget. You see the, uh, the 7533265 excess deficiencies of revenues over and under expenditures. The 7533 is what we anticipated utilizing from fund balance. That means we anticipated uh, expending $7.5 million more than we had coming in in revenue. We did have money available in fund balance so we could fund this budget. If you look over in the actual column, we actually expended only $4.1 million um, of expenditures over and above revenue. So we only used 4.1 where we had planned on using 7.5. We used 4.1. And almost the majority of that was all capital outlay. Um, we, we, did, we did a lot of capital projects this year, so we, we spent a lot, of money, a lot of money out of fund balance, a lot less than we anticipated, but it was all to uh, building improvements, and it was all to, uh, to capital outlay. The majority of what we spent over and above what we normally would spend is capital outlay. So your fund balance went from $12 million last year to $8 million this year. Uh, again, it was all planned. It was a capital <coughs> outlay. Um, so we're now at $8 million. That's at June 30th, 2015. Some of that money is reserved. There's a lot of uses for that money, and I'm going to go through those quickly. Uh, the restricted for excess, sur excess surplus, the current year, 574000 The state allows you to maintain 2%, basically 2%, there's a calculation, basically 2% of your budget expenditures you're allowed to maintain in fund balance. Anything over and above that, they consider excess fund balance. Excess fund balance will be required to be budgeted in the next budget that you put together. So at this point, it would be the <coughs> well, two years behind. Um, the next would be the 16-17 budget. You're going to be required to use that 574,000. The number below that, the 391, was your excess surplus from the previous year, and that that would be that was anticipated in your in your 15-16 budget. We put away $487,000 for, 
future capital projects. That's in capital reserve. That's available for any capital projects that come up. We've put away $3.2 million for maintenance reserve. So if there's maintenance projects, large maintenance projects that come along, that's where that money's available for that. Um, the committed to encumbrances, are, those are orders. Encumbrances are orders that are out on the street where we have not yet received the goods. Those are monies that we know we're on the hook for, things that we've ordered that we have not yet received or have not yet paid for. The, um, the $750,000 coupled with the three hundred ninety-one, that's the money that you budgeted for the 15-16 uh, school year. So we're anticipating using uh, a little over... Um, I guess about $11 million to fund the, um, to fund the, the 16, 17, but the 15, 15, 16 budget. <clears throat> and then what the, finally the unassigned fund balance or what's really truly free fund balance is two is about $2 million. So, um, fund balance is down a little bit, but that was certainly planned. we did a lot of capital improvements this year. So overall, I think the results are, are pretty good as compared to what we had anticipated using versus what we used. Everything, everything that you spend in the, in the operating is in this, and you can really take a look at, you know, budget versus actual. Um, another section I think is, is very interesting in the report is um, 161. I say interesting. I'm an accountant. But I don't know if interesting is probably a strong word. Um, page 161 through page 190 is what they call a statistical section, and this is nice because it's a 10-year look back. Um, kind of gives you a history, a lot of history about. The budget, um, the revenues, where we spent money, uh, the revenues that, that um, the revenues were our, our revenues have really kind of um, evened out. Um, it also gives you a lot of demographic information about the township, um, tax rates, uh, assessed valuations, <clears throat> the debt limits, the debt not only for the school district but also for the town and for the county and, and all the debt that the, uh, the the citizens are responsible for. So there's a lot of good information in here. I think generally when you start to prepare your budget, you may want to take a look at this because it kind of gives you an idea of what do we spend in the past, what are we spending now. You'll see how flat your state revenues have been over the past 10 years. So I think there's a lot of good information in there. And then the last section I want to talk about is the MDNA. That's the, uh, the smaller report. <clears throat> Again, that's our report to you. Four page on um, it's, it should be a, another cover it's small there. Small report. It's, it's, it's oh, the back page it's, one. There, there should be another yep. second yep. page. Yeah. Okay. Um, the MDNA is our report to you, and it covers a lot of things that we do in the audit. It obviously doesn't cover everything. There's a tremendous amount of work that goes into this, this document, as you can imagine. But it talks about the fact that we look at payroll, we look at pensions, and we look at bids and, and invoicing and internal <laughs> controls. And it gives you kind of an overview of what we do in the audit. Um, any comments or concerns that we would have would show up in here. Uh, I'm happy to report that we do not have any comments this year. Um, they do an outstanding job here, uh, one of the best school districts that we work with. And again, we work with over 60. Um, things are done right, it's very pleasant to work with, uh, timely. Um, we, I really can't say much more about it. Our folks really enjoy working here because we come in and we get a lot of cooperation. So I think Thank you should you. all be commended. Well, we really do, and that's, it's true. You've gotten a lot of accolades tonight, though. It's maybe, get, maybe getting a, a little bit. Um, but, but again, I want to thank you for allowing a firm to do the audit. I'm, I'm open to any questions that you may have tonight. I, again, I apologize that you didn't have the report before the meeting, so I know that makes it a little tough to answer questions. Uh, if there's something that comes up in the meantime, uh, if you can run them through Cindy, I'd be glad to get back to you. If you need me to come back up and, and, and answer some questions in front of the board, I'd be glad to do that as well. Um, is there any questions right now or um, anything I can help you with? In the committee, anything uh, you want to add, Chris? Yeah, I mean, um, I know we spoke previously. Um, sorry. From a, um, from a spending standpoint, expense side, um, you know, we're, we're always under the microscope of spending too much money. Do you, in, in your opinion, do you believe that we are pretty much on par? I mean, and I may be stating the or questioning the obvious, but on par with where we should be, and maybe comparing to other districts that you deal with. Yeah, I, th I think what I what I look at, um, and it's a little bit harder to see in this budget because we had planned on particular capital projects, so there was the the, the fund balance was reduced this year, planned re reduction. Um, 
But I mean, you really spent about $3.3 .3 million less than you budgeted. Um, and the, uh, I, I, think that's, I think that's a tremendous thing. I think that's what allows you to, to maintain a stable tax rate, to have fund balance to put back in. You're, you have excess surplus. And, and I, in my personal opinion, 2% of expenditures is not enough surplus for a, or fund balance for a, a district to maintain, but that's kind of what you, the parameters you have to live within. So I, I, I would say you're doing a very good job of, of not spending all of your budget, living within your means, you're putting a responsible budget together. Um, you know, I, I, I know the, the quality of the education up here. I, I know I, I don't think there's anybody questions that. So uh, I, I, I think you're right where you need to be. Thank you. Anybody else? Yep. <clears throat> I also wanted to say thank you. You answered a lot of our questions at, during the audit committee, um, especially with this Gatsby that we were, <laughs> yeah. we were unaware yeah. of. Um, but there was one thing that you did explain to us very well that I would love for the board to hear is in July when we have the ability to transfer into our maintenance reserve versus keeping it in capital improvements, as far as uh, defining how that money can be spent or can't be spent when it goes into maintenance reserve because we were speaking about our big band-aids that we have right and there's certain reasons why we can't use certain money that I think would be beneficial for the board and the public yeah and I think yeah. I think you talked about when, when we're in, at the end of at the end of June I think you normally look at what do you want to put into capital reserve versus maintenance reserve and maintenance reserve is strictly for maintenance. I mean, it's it, they're really it's kind of self-explanatory, I guess. But um, the capital reserve can be utilized probably, and I know there's a referendum coming up and, and there's some things that we're going to be talking about, but um, that can be used for, for preliminary costs. The capital reserve can be, can be budgeted at any time. Um, maintenance reserve would have to be budgeted as part of your uh, budget process. Um, so the maintenance reserve is, is okay for you know, roofs, if there's a hole in the roof, but that's not, not being, you're not able to use that to replace the roof. So they're very particular about what comes out of maintenance reserve and what comes out of capital reserve. Thank you. Thank you. What else? Okay. I'm going to okay. thank the committee members for their time on the committee. Yeah, we, we had a good, we had a real good finance committee meeting. I thought it was, it was couple, you know, about an hour and a half and we went through a lot of detail. So uh, I think we got a lot accomplished that day. Thank you. Congratulate Cindy again. I guess we got to say it again. <laughs> He's probably, things. probably enough accolades. <laughs> <for> <laughs> yeah, I'm not used to this many, so. Yeah. <laughs> so and everybody have a wonderful holiday. And, uh, thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care now. I'll bring us to page uh, six, financial and business operations. Do we have any changes on financial, Cindy? Uh, yes. Uh, page seven, list of bills. The number's going to change. It's 8 million 055 307.82. And number four, the staff. Uh, Jim McCann is going. It should be 16, not 15. Otherwise, he would have already went to the very bottom <laughs> of the page. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's fair enough. Other than that, that's it. Thank you. And you do have an addendum. Do you have the addendum in front of you? No. Yes. No? No. Yes. no. Number 15. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I have it, though. Separate sheet. I have it now. Thank you. All right, so we have 14 resolutions from page 6 to 12, plus one addendum. Okay. Number 15. Dari, am I reading, please? The superintendent of schools submits the following resolutions for approvals. One, transfers. Two, list of bills. Three secretary monthly reconciliation reports. Four travel. Five harassment, intimidation, bullying report. Six audit. Seven approval of contract. Fresnick's consultants. Eight out of district placement for 2015 2016 school year. Nine donations. Ten donation. Eleven donation. Twelve approval of facilities use fee schedules. 13, authorization for MRESC to develop nursing services contract for the 2015-2016 school year. State purchase contract, number 15, out of district placement for the 2015-2016 school year. I so move. Thank you, Dara. Seconded by Robin.
discussion on financial business? Correct. On number four, um, travel. Mm -hmm. the, um, the people that are going to that Texpo, mm -hmm. why is there such a difference in the amount for each person? Because it looks like the number of days are pretty much the same. One is number of days, and Kim is not staying overnight. So there's no hotel involved with her. And so there's no meals also. Okay. So Right. Everybody else is pretty close to the same amount, except for the last person. He's only going for the day. We only pay his registration. So there's no hotel and no meals. Right. So the difference between Kim and the last person who's only going for one day. One day versus two days. She, her registration, she doesn't pay a registration fee because it's included in her dues. Oh, so the last one is including a registration fee. That's, yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, just so you know, Jay's a teacher um, that got selected to present down there. So he was presenting. So there's a bunch of us that are presenting down there. Oh, um, Mr. Blown yeah, is, is presenting with uh, Mr. Lindstrom. Um, they're doing, is it classroom? Uh, I'm doing Google Calendar. Uh, they're doing great things to do in the classroom. So they were all, they're all chosen to present. So it'll actually get cheaper because for those of us that present, it's going to be cheaper than this. That, that was, I just said that. They're presenting, they still. It's not a whole count. lot cheaper, though. That's the problem. <laughs> no. I think if you present, you should be free, but that's my editorial comment. And I had just another quick question on number 14, the, um, the Toshiba Financial Services, the copier services. Yep. Is that for purchasing a new? No, nope, it's, our, it's our lease. It's our monthly lease for 15 <laughs> copiers throughout the district. Quarter, oh, it's a quarterly. It's a quarterly fee. So we pay about 80,000 <laughs> copiers for the district for the Yes. Year. Okay. Thank you. That, that's for so many copies, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. And that was, yeah. that was cheaper than what we were paying. Yes. Yeah, I remember that. Good, Craig? Vicki? Yeah. Yeah, I have a question. I guess, Eric, this is for you or Mike. The, the donations on number yep. um, 10 and 11. Yes. It's mostly 11. Mostly, well, number 10 and 11. For the, for the leveled reading program, yes. can you explain to me, like, why does a PTO pay? What is that? Sure. So what uh, both... You didn't say it in the ring. Sure. So both Joanne <coughs> and David wanted extra uh, essential leveled reading materials, uh, and rather than wait to budget for a full year, because that wasn't in the budget for right now, they, they chose to go to um, their respective PTO and their respective PTA, right? PTA? Student activities. Oh, student activities. I'm sorry. Um, to, to pay for the, the leveled readers. So when children go into small group, uh, when they're not in small group, they could have um, they could have level readers that match their Lexile level to push them from <coughs> their zone of proximal development on up. Okay. I asked the same question. Yeah. So <laughs> so what happens is is that they wouldn't have essentially been able to budget that into their school budgets on a yearly basis uh, without adding a lot more. Uh, so typically those types of big purchases they run through curriculum. So rather than wait a full year to have the supplies. Um, they both they both wanted extra extra reading materials for the children. So and I they go to the PTOs for it. Yeah, yeah, <coughs> <coughs> absolutely. <coughs> well, even Robertsville is amazing. That's almost fifteen thousand dollars. They gave and the other school gave eight thousand. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of money that they raise. All those parents. Absolutely people. amazing. One hundred percent. That be a question. No. You good? Done. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay. Cindy, please call the roll. Mrs. Dean? Yes. Mrs. Cow? Yes. Mrs. Lou Rudell? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. Matos? Yes. Mrs. Zenny? Yes. <coughs> Excuse me, Mrs. Wolf? Yes. And Mr. Lulonsky? Yes. Page 13, curriculum, one resolution. Deb, please. Sure. The superintendent of schools submits the following resolution for approval. One, authorization to submit equivalent, equivalency application. I so move. Thank you, Deb. Second by. Joanne? Gian, I'm sorry. Gian? Wait. Gian. Thank you. I'm looking that way. Um. Questions on curriculum? This is because we're high performing, uh, because we met all the indicators. Uh, essentially, they say that we're, uh, according to standards set by the state, we won't have to do anything really again for approximately three years. So this is not offered to just any school district. This is this is a real this is a nice honor. 
Okay, but is it? Right. Mrs. Wolf? Yes. Mrs. Dean? Yes. Mrs. Wolf? Yes. Mrs. Dean? Yes. Mrs. Annie? Yes. Mrs. Lou Riddell? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. Cow? Yes. Mrs. Matos? Yes. Mr. Lolonsky? Yes. Personal matters of um, 23 resolutions from 14 to 25 page. Any changes, Sin? Oh, no. Well, good. <laughs> Okay, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> this job is no, Dr. Ah, Victoria, please. Personnel matters. The superintendent of schools submits the following resolutions for approval. One, retirement. Two, resignations. Three, employment. Certificated staff. Four, employment. Instructional assistance. Five, employment. School monitor. Six, employment. Student information systems and data services manager. Seven, employment. Bus attendant. Eight, reemployment, instructional assistant. Nine, reassignment, certificated staff. Ten, amended hours and salaries. Eleven, transportation, amended hours, salaries. Twelve, stipend, mentor, teacher. Thirteen, substitute, HOT, co advisor. Fourteen, substitute teachers. Fifteen, substitute instructional assistant. Sixteen, substitute school monitor. <coughs> Seventeen, student teachers. Eighteen, field ob observation. 19 student internships, 20 student practicum, 21 paid medical disability leaves, 22 unpaid leaves of absence, 23 amended resolution leave dates. I so move. Thank you, Ricky. Seconded by Joanne. Discussion on personnel. Craig. Um, number four, um, instructional assistance. We're adding five new people, right? How do we um, how do we determine that need? In other words, what what went from having the number that we had to now the necessity to add five more? Generally, this is special education enrollment. So as students become classified and as we need need more instructional assistance, we anticipate that as the year goes on and we classify more children as needing as having special needs, that we need to add more IAs. So we have that many more students that we're anticipating for special needs that we need five more people? In these buildings, yeah. Most of them are self-contained programs, and in self-contained programs there's a higher ratio of adults to students. Um, and when we add more students to self-contained programs, MD programs, autism programs, we need to add more instructional assistance, even if it's one or two. It still sets off the ratio, and we need to add it's a, a six to one ratio in some of those rooms, if not three to one. So it's, it's not really anticipated. It's as you needed. already know it's as needed. Well, so the the evaluate the special education evaluation process takes right. so up to ninety days. So we knew, you know. or special ed knew back maybe even budgeting time that there were some kids, as we like to call it, in the hopper under evaluation, and we could anticipate that these students may be classified and will need more staff based on their needs. That's not to say that we will have agenda items like this all the time on all agendas. You know, this is, the, you're right, this is unique, but we should be good for a little while. Okay, well, I'll probably question it again. Then. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> also, just as a follow-up, this is budgeted, so this is not yeah. right. an extra budget amount. We yeah. figured that this was gonna be a need. Historically, it comes about mid-year. Mm -hmm that we have to add. And, and we've had a, a difficult time hiring, <coughs> to be honest, multiple postings, you know, to the newspaper. It's it's not easy to find. Some of these could even be and are new positions that we've been searching for since September, too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so they're, they're out there. We've been hiring subs until now. So we found these people, which is okay. good. Mm -hmm. Okay, can I keep going? <gasps> yeah. um, number six. Um, we're, we're saying this is a new position, but wasn't this kind of the revamped position from somebody who left? I just want to make it clear that yes. we're not adding yes. another, you know, seventy thousand dollar employee here. That no. there's a there's a difference. Absolutely. So uh, to your point, Mr. Marshall, you are not just adding a seventy thousand dollar employee. You are subtracting one of our techs at approximately forty. Yes. Um, at approximately forty. That's exactly it. So we did not add a position on top of a position. We let the other one simply lapse, not rehiring it. This person is coming instead of that other right. position. And and this is what we discussed and approved at the last meeting, right? Absolutely. Okay, good. 
And this price was within the limits of what we had said, right? I think we said upper upper 60s. Uh, yep, um, we tried, um, and it was going to fall apart if we didn't get to 70. The person, mm -hmm. I think, was coming at around 58 um, and wasn't going to come for 67, 68. It just it all fell apart, and we didn't like our number two. Well, I think it makes sense. I mean, you've got cost of employee turnover. If it doesn't work out, so you might as well go in and, and be able to keep who you're bringing Absolutely. in. Plus, this, this position is demanding this all over the place, so it's not as yeah. though we don't know that. Right. No, I just wanted to make it clear that it wasn't a Extra. new $70,000 no. expense, no. that this is basically no, an additional thirty. but we've, right we're have we bringing somebody in who's a lot more qualified yes. and, and mm -hmm. being able to do yeah. a lot more functionality. And this person, it's going to be a seamless transition because yeah. of her years of experience with Genesis and IEP mm -hmm. Direct. And School Messenger. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, number nine. Um, can we just get a quick definition of what we're talking about when we use the term tenure track? Sure. This, Dr. Hart, take it. all you. Um, this individual was hired as a replacement position, which means uh, a replacement position is not on the tenure track, which means he was not currently accruing time as, t as a tenured teacher. Now that we have an opening in that building, he can now be transferred to that position, even though he won't actually transfer his class. He can be transferred to that position to begin accruing tenure. So a replacement position is just a substitute, a long-term substitute teacher. A tenure track position is a teacher who has now retired and left, and someone is taking that position, and they're able to accrue tenure. And how long does that accrual t typically take? Four, Four years, years and one day. day in order to earn tenure. For teachers. So different per sectors. So this individual will earn tenure on 1, 5, 20, 20? Did I have that right? Did I do my math real quick? I'd also, Four years in a day. I'd also Four like to say, this, this, um, this yeah, individual one, five, is the only person right. that I think I've ever met that has more energy than me. True. Um, um, wave, give, give a wave. There's the Daniel. Here. <laughs> Super excited. Awesome guy. Um, number 11. Um, this, the additional time that's required, is that because the route changed or he's driving the speed limit? What, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> All of the above. <laughs> no, what happens is, is when we put this out and we do this, we estimate this is what it's going to be, and it turns out circumstances, it's not that. So we had to add the additional time because traffic is just what it is. And uh, this one, I think... Um, Two hours, yeah, it, it's, they, they've added things to it. She's changed some things around. So what's happening is we have to uh, add to this route. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you don't mind if I just yeah. keep going. rolling. Just Go floor. Going. I had a lot of idle time in the car. Um, <laughs> number 12. Hope not while you were driving, Frank. No, no, no. Said <laughs> idle. Then, then I'm technically. Get really. um, <laughs> when we have mentors, and just forgive the question, but I, it just it wasn't making sense to me. Um, are they putting in additional time? Because typically when I hear the term mentor, it's usually a voluntary type of a position or leadership role that somebody takes in order to better the life of somebody else. So is, is that what's happening here, that they're spending more time and we're paying for them to do that? Is that yes. what's... Is that what this they, is? Yeah, they, exactly. the, the expectation is that they have weekly meetings. Um, and they go they, way above that. They, mm -hmm. Yeah, they do go way above that, that they spend time after school with their novice, novice teacher, meaning the new teacher, um, that they take time out of their own day to go observe them in their classroom mm -hmm. to assist them with lesson plans. So there is an expectation that they take time out of their own day. Yeah. But they're not to, sacrificing what they're no. normally doing no. for that time. That's right? why we compensate them additionally, because they're still so expected they the to question. fulfill their role. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay. And we're, we're mandated now by the state to pay to pay that mentoring fee. Mm -hmm. Is that about a year ago that that changed ish? Yeah, it was more than that. Yeah, more than that too. Okay. Which is used to happen. And I think that's mm -hmm. my last one on this um, number thirteen. I'm, I'm assuming by the footnote there that if there is no funding for this, then this is not an expense to stipend that we're going to be incurred. Yes, okay. it's the alliance it hands off tobacco. So if if the funding goes away, then it doesn't, it ceases to exist. Okay. Thank you very much. Unless the board you chose to refund it. Okay. Next question. Anybody else? Quick. Just a comment. Okay. Um, Richard Oppegaard is retired or resigning from Marlboro Memorial Middle School, and I just want to publicly say that he's well loved there. Awesome. So will be missed. 
short time, too. He's only very short here. time. Oh, that's nice. That's but nice to hear. They're very that is nice. sad. For <coughs> <that's very nice. coughs> Thank you. 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 Thank well, number 22, the first name, is that correct, the explanation, the reasoning? <laughs> That's his yeah. question. <laughs> yeah, they're entitled to un, uh, yeah, unpaid child care leave. No, 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 I just, I was, I, I didn't even know there was, Yeah. I just thought maybe it was a mistype. I mean, a, for lack of a better word, technically it'd be like a paternity leave. Right. All, all individuals are yeah. protected under FMLA, the federal uh, family leave act, so yeah. But it's rare it. to see it. You're yeah, it very was, rare. Not only it's rare, I think it's great that he's doing that, but I didn't realize that there was, um, mm -hmm. they had one. Yeah. She thought it was Antonia. <laughs> no, no, I knew, I know Mr. G. So, one Rob. A number 10, also yeah. the increase of hours. I mean, one was just minutes. <laughs> and so, Hill. Yeah. And so what's happening, what happened over at Dufino, Anne was on a, a six hour schedule and she teaches a self-contained class. And what was happening for the beginning of the school year the building principal tried to make it work where she would teach six hours and a different teacher would come in for the following last hour of the day. Because it was a self-contained room, it was not providing for an appropriate continuity of education. So in meeting with her, she would teach her hours. Great. Okay, thanks, Robin. Anybody else? Good. Okay, Cindy, please call the roll. First no. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. Matos? Yes. Mrs. Wolf? Yes. This is Annie. Um, I'm abstaining on number 20 for um, the mentor, the practicum, whatever, practicum for Dr. Nancy Asher Schultz. And yes to everything else. Mrs. Cow? Yes. Mrs. Lou Rudell? Yes. Mrs. Dean? Yes. And Mr. Lelonsky? Yes. Mm -hmm. Daniel, sir. Welcome, Welcome to the family. Thanks, thanks for that. <laughs> Wish you a long and fruitful career here. <laughs> um, we have a retiree. I, we do. Uh, Stephanie DePuzo began working as a school aide at the Marlboro Elementary School in 1999. Stephanie has worked with supportive administrators and staff and has enjoyed wonderful experiences during her 16 years. Mrs. DePuzo thrived on relationships forged with her students. She reflected, I will miss seeing their smiling faces and watching them develop and grow. Stephanie also valued the bonds formed with her fellow school age. She shared, you really get a chance to know someone when you work as closely as I did. I will admit we did. I will miss the daily interactions with all of my coworkers. In her retirement from RL, Stephanie will be moving to Edenton, North Carolina with her husband, Joe. She loves spending time with her husband and children, Christopher and Amanda. Stephanie also enjoys cooking with her daughter, who's accomplished pastry designer. We want to thank Stephanie for her dedication and commitment to the students of Marlboro Elementary School, and we wish her well on her new adventure. Thank you, sir. On behalf of the Board of Education, we thank her as well for 15 years of dedication to the students of Marlboro. Wish her happy and healthy retirement. Absolutely. Policy development. We have some first readings on page 26, Craig. Mine. Sure. The superintendent of schools submits the following for approval by the Board of Education. First readings, I so move. Second you, by you don't have to read the, all the policies, right? Dara. Second. Second. Seconded by Dara. Discussion? Sir. Have anything you want to add to that? Well, no, I, I think I, I put a summary in, yep. in the notes for everyone. There's a, a brief summary of each policy, um, and these the M's are mandated updates. The other ones are updates just out of necessity for the district. Okay. Do you have any questions? Yeah. Um, for the grading system, is anything new or change on this? Grading system? Yeah. Very little has changed. On the grading system policy, we just updated some of the language. Instead of reflecting the New Jersey state standards, we changed it to reference the uh, Common Core state standards. Mm -hmm. And we just added a little bit of verbiage about our grading expectations. Pretty much very little was added. Okay. 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 Anybody else? Okay, Cindy, please call the roll. I'm letting this? you get off way too easy, by the way. Okay. I'm not. I'm they vote it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just say they let me off way too yeah. easy? Yeah. 
Well, he, he gave, beat me up. He, he, he gave <laughs> a very good explanation. Did you read those green notes? He that did, was right? amazing. Very good. 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 Very I did all the research that we talked about. Everything we spoke about. Everything we spoke about was in all of the minutes were like from that meeting were like five pages long. I know. We had a lot of. Out of boy, Dr. Hart. did that all on your honeymoon. Was sent by the beach or something? Oh, I'm not doing anything on the honeymoon. That's coming up. That's coming up. Oh, you didn't go? We haven't gone yet. Oh, God. No, we leave on Saturday. Oh, no. He's waiting for the break. Oh. He did. Wow. Awesome employee. Sorry, I derailed. Your fault. Hurry up and vote before <laughs> if everybody would stop. I would, you know. <laughs> Mrs. Matos. Yes. Mrs. Wolf. Yes. Mrs. Dean. Yes. Mrs. Cow. Yes. Mrs. Lou Rudell. Yes. Mrs. Annie. Yes. Mr. Marshall. Yes. And Mr. Lelonsky. Yes. Because. Okay. Uh, liaison reports. We have anything from New Jersey School Boards? Mom County? Marlboro Township liaison? Mm -hmm. Anything? No. PTA, PTL scope. Um, do we have a meeting? No, we didn't have one. We didn't have a meeting. <laughs> no, I didn't think so. And yeah. honestly, the like liaison, the tree lighting uh, we went to. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. right? And did the tree lighting. Which was, which was awesome. It was really nice. And they did a candlelight vigil. And um, Mrs. Tropper spoke. Her daughter, Victoria, was killed by a drunk driver. Um, several years ago when she spoke out it was really wonderful and they powerful. mixed the, how, the the tree lighting the menorah lighting mm -hmm. and the candlelight vigil all together it was a really nice event yeah it was it was great very good thanks Reverend Sorry, uh, Rio Regional Marlboro Township Alliance we did that Marlboro Educational Foundation I mean the Alliance but we don't did you did you go there no I'm not sure. Educational Foundation um, they just finished mm -hmm. their warm winter wishes campaign, and we're doing another wine tasting. So, look for that. Awesome. Yeah. And they're also it's going to be one other, um, one other event fundraiser for, in hopefully work. March that we're working on that we might need some teachers to play some basketball okay. against the Harlem Wizards. So okay. we're just waiting for the we want to use the high school gym, so we're waiting for yeah, paperwork date to that, go through the there. Wine thing, there was a date yet for that? What? Mm -hmm. date, no, yet no date yet. Okay. For the wine. Tentatively, March 23rd will be the date. It's a Wednesday night. No. We're just waiting for approval from the high school to make sure that volleyball doesn't need the gym that night. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. We're working on a jean contribution, too. Yes, <laughs> if the teachers wear jeans on Friday, January 8th. Or we'll switch the day okay. because they can wear jeans on Fridays anyway. Okay. So we'll pick a different day, and then we'll work it out that way. And the teachers will pay to wear <laughs> jeans, and the funds will go to the Marlboro <laughs> Educational Foundation. Someone came up with that. So. Okay, cool. We do that in the summer. Yeah. They did that in, in the South, right? Yeah. Okay, very good. Uh, committee reports. I already heard from the, uh, the Budget Audit Committee. Uh, but we don't have building the grounds, did not meet. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? I don't think we had anybody meeting. No. Okay. Anybody have any old business? I yes, guess it would be under old business. Um, this is our last meeting of 2015. And I just want to take the time. I don't know what's going to happen next year, who's going to sit at that lead position. But I personally want to thank you, Mike, yes. for being an exceptional leader, uh, transparent with this board, always transparent, always willing to listen to us as a group individually, always there for us if we needed a call. And it was an honor to serve next year for these years together. And yeah. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Well. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Yeah. Very and, and, you know, I, I've dealt with Mike for almost this would be my third year um, there's no one that's more of a gentleman than you uh, you 100% are a child advocate to your inner core um, so you know it's this is sometimes not an easy place to work or lead and you do it all for free all for mm -hmm. the children mm -hmm. Michael does not just if you don't know Michael Michael does not miss a musical performance he hands out uh, he hands out programs he moves chairs he is just, you know, goes on trips. everybody <laughs> does a lot, microphones. but if we're, if we're really giving accolades tonight, you know, Mr. Lelonsky is, uh, is amazing. Uh, I, I received a phone call uh, yesterday. Was, was it yesterday? What was my birthday? Yesterday. Yesterday, yesterday. yesterday was my birthday. Oh, oh by the way, happy birthday. birthday. Yeah. I saw Star Wars. Yeah. I, 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 took, I took a vacation day. Don't, please don't judge me. And I saw Star Wars all by myself. I have three children. You, you, I'm sure you understand. Um, and, and I touched base with Michael, and the first word was, we, we won. And that was in regards to the 101.5 music. So just, Thank you, sir. you're awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Anybody else old business? Yes, a good leadership. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Joy. New business. Okay. Seeing none, move us to our final public session. Open to any item. Same ground rules as the first public session. Anybody from the public wish to address the board in any item? Okay. Seeing none, I'm going to read the executive session resolution. <clears throat> Be resolved in accordance with the provisions of Open Public Meetings Act, the Marlboro Township Board of Education shall conduct a closed executive session pursuant to personnel and legal exceptions required by NJSA 10 colon 4 12 for the purpose of discussing a, um, personal, school matters. personal matters, school safety, security, and safety. Do you have anything else? No. Okay. Right. And matters of attorney client privilege. Okay. Anticipating length of time, executive session will be 30 minutes, and action will not be taken in public after executive session. Oh, maybe? Action will be taken. Oh, will be, be taken. taken. Or may be taken. Will be taken in public at the executive session. And be further resolved, the minutes of executive session will be released with a need for confidentiality according to NJSA 10 colon 4 12. No longer applied. Seconded by Debbie. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody against? No? So, uh, I want to make a motion now to move to executive session. Seconded by Victoria. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody against? No? We will now move to executive session. Thank you, everybody, for coming out tonight. And have a good holiday season. Till so you're on. Okay, we're back in. Anyone seconds it? You session. It, yep. Personnel matters. The sub superintendent of schools submits the following resolution for approval: 24 termination of employment contract. I so move. Thank you. Seconded by jo Joanne. Any further discussion on personnel? Seeing none. Cindy, please call the roll. Mr. Marshall. Yes. Mrs. Matos. Yes. Mrs. Wolf. Yes. Mrs. Enney? Yes. Mrs. Cow? Yes. Mrs. Luberdell? Yes. Mrs. Dean? Yes. And Mr. Lelonsky? Yes. I will make a motion to adjourn, seconded by Debbie. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Was anybody against? No. Happy holidays, everybody.